What's up guys and welcome back to the channel. My red F-250 started life as a work truck. So it literally, when I got it, it had like a bench seat. It has vinyl flooring. It like had the old gauge cluster, none of the buttons on the steering wheel and some of that stuff. So we actually updated it. I'm gonna go show you some of the updates that we already did. So we installed a newer set of seats. So these seats are out of a 2016 with like 30,000 miles on them. The center console, a Lariat steering wheel, and then a Lariat gauge cluster along with the chrome vents with a new dash that doesn't have as much issues. One of the things is we still have a vinyl floor. Some of this stuff on the ground is actually in kind of rough shape. You can see that it's like work truck and it's just like, you can't make it glossy again because it's literally like sanded down. One of the things I've been wanting to do is kind of change up the interior, upgrade the interior, make it a little bit nicer. Also, you can see that we have the, the gray door panels. So a couple of weeks ago, I was actually on Marketplace. I was driving around in Denver, doing some stuff, picking up some other things, and I ran across a full platinum interior. So it's a Lariat platinum interior, which is this right here. And it actually came with the dash. So this stuff was out of a 2015 or 2016. It was actually a platinum. So that means that it has the wood grain right here. It has the full center console, which is cool because it goes, you know, full length. It has these things that actually hook up the leather seats. It has black door panels. It has black carpet, a black headliner. I'm having a little bit of a dilemma right now. My truck does not have these plugs. So underneath the seats, this plug is full of wires and there's another plug too. But essentially this whole plug needs plugged in and it needs power in order to operate the heated, the cooled, like the whole memory situation with them. It's not really gonna work in my truck. And especially with the dash, there's a lot of, my truck is a 14. This truck was a 15 or 16 that we got the parts out of. This one, like it has like the dash screen and all that other stuff, but I don't think it will work in mine, especially without the right body control modules, or at least I don't think so without a little bit of work. I'm gonna continue to try and find like the wiring and stuff, cause that is the one piece that we did not get. As of right now, the one thing that I would like to do is actually install the carpet. My truck with it being like the vinyl, it's really thin and I feel like you get a little bit more road noise. As you can see, these door sills are in a lot better shape. So uh, we'll be swapping over some of that too. That's kind of my idea. Grab the center console and the carpet and then we'll install that in my truck and then we will have a, a freaking center console and the carpet in my truck and that thing's gonna be freaking awesome. So we're gonna do that first. We have made it to the shop and the truck actually got polished and I wasn't the one to do it. So this is Danner. How's it going? Say, how you doing? How's it going? He said, how's it going? I said, how you well, doing? I guess how's it doing? Yeah, how you doing? But anyhow, it's uh, it's Danner with, it's like Tanner with a D. Yeah. Right? My parents didn't like me that much. I guess, so they just, they named you that? Yeah, they were both firefighters. Hmm. Gave me a boot name. He's actually been around the shop a couple times over the past couple weeks, just kind of to help out, do some things, basically get put to work. I, he likes working on things. I like working. It seems like it works out really well. So he actually helped me polish the Civic the last day. And then he's helped me a little bit on the F-250 and the R-33, which we're currently working on, which is gonna be another video. But if you can't tell, like the, the F-250 has a little spice oh, she's glossy. to it. Like it looks a lot better. Like it's crazy, like what polishing a work truck does. We did a couple extra little things. So we had a black vinyl sticker. So we put that on the grill. So the roof, see that? See how the roof has like that, like water stained, like scratched stuff on it. That's pretty much how a lot of the roof and a lot of the truck was. And we did a couple other things too. So we put the badging on it. So I got some new badges that are black. And then obviously the next thing on the agenda is swapping out this floor right here, which you can see, you know, work truck, they had bolts and stuff like randomly bolting things in. It's just kind of cramping my style. I would like the carpet. I think it'll make it sound a lot better. I think it'll feel a lot more like, like kind of at home. This stuff, like, even though it's like easy to clean, like I'm kind of a clean guy, even though it's kind of a work truck for me, it's like my nice truck. Like, like I've been parking it in the garage and like it's, it's, it gets treated nice and I don't beat up my stuff. Yeah, steering wheel's there, the Larry cluster's there and uh, soon, we're gonna go ahead and put it in that center console. So this thing goes in pretty simple. Basically, just, there's just some brackets, all of the stuff for the HVAC. But the one thing is, is since this truck is not a Lariat, it has this plug right here. This plug goes to, there's an outlet right here. So a cigarette lighter. In the back, there's an AC, 110 volt, 150 watt power inverter as well as another one with the AC vents in the back. Kind of nice on a road trip, you know, when we were on this last road trip, it's kind of getting hot back there. I was in there trying to sleep. I was like, hey, can you turn up the air? Charles is back there. Hey, can you turn up the air? But then you're, you're cold up front. So the carpet is over here. It's a little bit dusty from sitting around the shop. So 
getting that vacuumed up and I'm gonna go ahead and start pulling out the interior. Also, there's one other issue. When we did the whole interior, we did not do the headliner. When it gets hot, there's a little bit of a, a little bit of a smell and it's not terrible, but obviously this thing had some mouse stuff in it. I have to replace that seat belt over there. When we did the interior swap, like I cleaned it, like I wiped down the belt, but when we were on the road trip, I was, I had a pillow and you know, obviously I had my seatbelt on. I was trying to sleep in the front seat and I turned over and I smelled the seatbelt and I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> so I turned the other way and we went around, went on about the road trip, but that needs fixed. I'm gonna pull the headliner out, pressure wash it, clean it, the carpet, the console, try to figure out some wiring maybe at the junkyard. So we got a lot of things, so let's get to work. Tanner was messing with polishing the roof on this thing and it freaking turned out awesome. So not like a full, like you're gonna ceramic coat it and it's gonna go to a show, but just to get that dingy thing and it just looks, the whole truck, just like standing back and looking at it, it just has that like, I don't know. I don't know how to explain it other than it's just glossy and it looks shiny now. A little bit of a debate on what to do. So uh, we had the truck out in the junkyard that I pulled the dash and stuff out of, which was a 2016 XLT. And it actually had a center console. It was just the flip up one, but it actually had power to it. Whereas my console did not have power and it did not have a cigarette lighter to it. The nice thing about that truck out in the yard is since it did have power, where did it go? It actually had this wiring harness right here. So you could see it has the six wires that plug directly in to this guy right there. We have a couple issues. Obviously the truck out in the yard is XLT and with a power driver seat, but not the 10 way power with the memory and like the heated seats and the cooled seats and the passenger seat was manual. So this harness won't work to get like the full platinum interior in there, but I can take at least this wiring and use this so that way we don't have to cut all of this stuff and run, basically just give these powers and then I'll have, you know, cigarette lighter right here, cigarette lighter right here and the 100 in 10 volt thing to run like a laptop and stuff out of. So I think I'm gonna pull a little bit of this wiring out and I mean, literally all it is is 12 volts. So you have to give stuff power and ground. And I have a little fuse box that we did not use uh, when we were wiring the trailer. So I'm gonna go ahead and use that. Probably wire this stuff up. Then we'll actually have carpet. Stoked about that, but uh, I'm gonna start kind of de this thing. Pull some of the wires back, see how far we get. All right, so on the interior of the truck, really all you have to do to get the console to like bolt up is take out this lower section. So from the factory, you just have nothing here in the seat. Pull this guy off. Uh oh, you gotta take out all the bolts first. That's what you gotta do. But essentially then you install a bracket right here on the floor that the little pins slide into and then you get the HVAC. There's like another thing. There's another little piece that comes out. I think it actually comes out right here. And then you hook that up and then you should have AC. I think we figured out some of the wiring stuff. So that's going to be next. All right. So we went ahead and delumed this harness right here, which this was out of that extended cab. This thing will plug right into that console. And I've done a little bit of research on the internet and there's a couple things underneath this for the inverter right underneath. There's a box, which is like the inverter box. And I guess it needs a 12 volt, it needs ground, but it also needs a signal from the CAN bus. So that way it knows the truck is running, that everything is charging, that you're not like killing the battery. One of those sort of situations. That wire is actually this blue and white wire. It was kind of looking and it actually ended up coming over here into this harness and it was actually just in a junction with these other CAN bus harnesses. Same thing with this green and purple. That went to a switch 12 volt. The purple and black is uh, just a ground. And then these three wires right here are all 12 volt. So one is for the cigarette lighter, one is for the other cigarette lighter, and the red one is for the inverter. You have to modify that inverter box, but since, because it doesn't have the proper can signal, 
But since this does have the proper CAN signal because it is out of a 6.7 truck, which is the 6.7 CAN signal, everything should be fine. That wire will come right over here. Uh, I think it actually taps right into this plug. So I'll go ahead and I'll cut that CAN wire. Or I'll splice into that thing. And then right here, we actually have the fuse box and there is a 12 volt power lug. So I'll either run it straight to the fuse box and get like the little fuse jumper thing and maybe do that same thing for some of the other stuff. So we'll basically just pull, pull power right off the fuse box and uh, we should be good or I can make my own fuse box. But for the most part, the only thing I'm gonna to try to do now is just run that wiring right over here, get it up out of the way, and then we could plug everything in and we should be able to at least get this thing uh, working. The one issue right now though, is that this box up underneath the dash, in order to get this with the AC vents, I think I'm gonna to have to pull the complete dash out to get to that. Debating on that, getting the actual AC vents to work or just kind of skipping it for now. And then potentially if we get the whole platinum interior to be able to work, if we get that actual OEM harness, the whole inside one, which we've been having trouble locating, then we'll get all that stuff to work, obviously, because I don't have the, the big old dash and stuff. So here are the pieces. As you can tell, we decided to <laughs> remove the dash. Yeah, literally all it does is has this little thing where it sends air to the back. Perfect. Not bad. We're making some good progress. Like it, it didn't take that long. Like it probably took 10 minutes yeah, by the time we like actually started and then did it. So it's gonna maybe add 30 minutes to the project, but now we're gonna have rear AC, which, you know, that's the point. dash is going back in. I had one issue. We actually ended up having to swap the blower motor motor, I guess. And this is actually a motor. So this is not an engine. It's a blower motor motor. I guess it's the thing that switches it between like defrost and the center and the back. And basically on the road trip, it was split between the defrost, the center vents and the floor. So like it was just on all of them all the time. So like when the AC was on, it was just like a wit, you know, like you had like a gentle wall of cold that came it wasn't just like what you kind of want and then especially with swapping over to these extra vents right here that go to the back that wouldn't have really benefited us because literally none of it would have been going through the vents whereas right now if you put it on this vent it shoves a ton of air to the back seat which is exactly what you want so stoked about that this thing is in it's bolted down kind of tied in where it needs to go and then this wiring harness right here we just stuck it right here because that's pretty much where it goes ran the wire down here through here. Now we have these three wires, which basically just need power. This is a ground, this is CAN bus, and this is a switched ignition, which there's a switched ignition right here. CAN bus right there. And then the fuse box is actually just right there. So technically right now I have one fuse open and I could use like two of those fuse jumper things where you like stick that in the fuse and it like takes place and it jumps another fuse. I'll show you later. We have one of those that we could use just to get a cigarette lighter working. And then we have, I think I, I might do something else with the inverter because that needs like a 40 or 30 amp fuse. So we'll figure it out. There's literally a power lug right here that goes straight to the battery. So on top of all these fuses, there's a power lug. Should be good to go. So now we're pretty much good. Put the carpet back in, put the seats in. Uh, nothing has changed with the seats. The only thing that changed was this thing and that, which that was the big deal.
making some progress. So the thing I have left to do is wire in the red one for the inverter and then this wire into a CAN signal wire, like basically the CAN bus. And then we should have power and we should have cigarette lighters and we should have this thing ready to rip. So, stoked. Can you going in? Are you good? Hold on, hold on. We're gonna test. Okay, okay, no power. Key on. Oh, oh my goodness. Oh, buddy. Except for that one. Well, that one's no. broken. It's okay. Now, okay. turn it back off. Looking. No, yep. Just turn it back off. All right, key on. Oh, how you doing? Look at that. All right, now the next thing. Key on again. Yep. Oh, we got power up here. We're good to go. As of now, basically just need to button all this stuff up, put this thing back on, put the little lid on there, and uh, we're ready to go. Also, I'm gonna order a set of floor mats. Motion Auto Performance, we are actually distributors for Husky liners. So first time I've ever, I've never actually used them. So I'm gonna go ahead and order them and test them out on this truck. My last truck, I had WeatherTechs and we're actually waiting for dealer approval right now for WeatherTech. So we should have those shortly too. Maybe we'll do like a little comparison, but um, I'm gonna get this thing buttoned up. Charles, what do you think so far? This is coming together nicely and it really reminds me of your old truck, which I love. I'm a little sad because, you know, I like this. I really like the Apple CarPlay and stuff mm -hmm. on it. Uh, I miss the dual climate control yeah, and like the heated the seats and all that stuff, yeah, but overall, nice, cooled but. seats. Cooled seats. <laughs> you know, right now we got the cloth with no power, but you know, eventually we might end up being able to get that full, uh, the full platinum interior in here, and that will be sick. And then literally, it will be exactly like my other truck, other than it's red and a 14 instead of a 16. Ready to rip, right? Yep, and our legs don't stick to the seats. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I mean, look at that. Legs don't stick. Uh, the only other thing, need to clean the headliner, but other than that, I think I'm just going to kind of spray it. Uh, Pretty much that smell was this seat belt over here. So now we have a brand new seat belt. It smells like a new truck. Yeah. yeah it smells great. Which was my goal from the beginning. And like this whole truck has stressed me out the whole time I've had it because I like spent all the time and it still had a smell. So uh, we get it buttoned up. This thing's gonna look sick. And then, uh, I don't know. Brand new. liked this video and you think it was cool the little transformation I know it's not that big of a difference on camera but it is a huge difference in person it smells good it looks good it is functional if you guys like the build videos on this truck and you haven't seen the previous like transformation of this thing this thing started off as a basically a blown up engine work truck the paint was trashed the front bumper was ugly it was it's kind of ugly it didn't run it was rat infested and we did all of that build in the playlist right here. So click that if uh, you guys have a little bit of time to watch. Appreciate the support. See you later.